Good morning and welcome to Missionary Grove. We're so glad to have you all here with us today. We have just a few quick announcements for you this week. This evening at 5 p.m. right here at MGBC, we will be hosting our Daughters of the King Women's Ministry Night and our guest speaker will be Olivia House. So ladies, please invite a friend and join us for a great time of faith and fellowship with your sisters in Christ. Today is the day to pay deposits. If you plan to attend this year's Fall Women of Joy Conference in October, ladies, your $100 deposit is due today, so please see Mrs. Tammy Smith. Also, if you plan to be a part of this year's mission team going to Honduras in October, your $500 deposit for airfare is due today. Please see Pastor Matt or Mrs. Tiffany Greer. Coming up on July 24th at 5 p.m. will be our youth small group for junior high and high school age students. And coming up on July 31st, we will be throwing a back to school pool party. This pool party will be for children of all ages and it will be held at the City of Camden Pool from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. If you would like to sign your child up, please go online to missionarygrove.com or if you would like to help volunteer for the pool party, which we can always use help, then please go online to our church website. That's all the announcements I have for you this week. So now, if you would, please stand and join us for a time of worship. Search the world, it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fade were never enough. And you came along, and you put me back together. Beauty for ashes. You turn. 
turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the
nothing can stand against I choose to praise Glorify, glorify the name of all names Nothing can stand against Yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will for all my days. Yes, I will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord that he's there for us always of our days, the good days and the bad, and all he asks for is our yes, right? So he went to that cross for us, shed his blood so that we could have all that he would provide, and all we have to do is say yes.
some praise Jesus thank you for enduring that cross for us that we might uh, not endure the father's wrath or condemnation or any type of shame or suffering God we might uh, know that our eternity is settled in you Lord and that because you care about our eternity you care about our right now so thank you for presently working in our lives and bringing us to yourself God we love you and we praise you, and we ask you in this moment, as we preach the word, God, may it do what it does. It is alive and well, and so are you. Show yourself strong to us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give the Lord another hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. We're going to have the kids dismissed through second grade to the lobby, and we're getting ready for the preached word of God this morning. Amen. Psalm chapter 27. Hope you've had a blessed last week and I hope you're ready for a good new week in the Lord. Today you're here to be equipped for the work of the ministry. Sundays are only part of the ministry, but the majority of the ministry happens outside of this place. God's got a good work for you. Uh, God's got a, a good plan for you. And um, I'm excited about today's message um, as we talk about waiting patiently on the Lord. It's hard to wait. Amen. Uh, it's easy just to go do. Uh, I've heard people say, well, I'm going to do something. You know, I got, I'm going to do something whether it's right or not. And I'd say, well, that's not going to work. You're going to do something and then you're going to have to fix what you just did because you didn't wait on the Lord. Um, just because you're not doing something doesn't mean you're not right with God. It's okay to sit and wait and pray and trust and just let things play out the way God wants them to. Let God fight your battles. Let God work on your behalf and Man, we, we sure want to fix things. And I know some of you, how many of you would consider yourself a fixer? You like to fix things, right? Yeah. 95% of the time, you can't fix it. It's, it's not like a broken something at your house. I'm talking about in the spiritual realm. You, you, you want to just fix it. I want it to be better. I'm just going to fix it. And most of the time, the issue's me, and God needs to fix me, not it. <laughs> But a lot of times we treat symptoms and not the problems. You know, do you, do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of times what we see and what we're looking at is, is a symptom of a greater issue that only God can fix. And so as we look at Psalm chapter 27, we see David uh, in the midst of all of this, that ups and downs and hard times and uh, they're trying to kill him. They're trying to destroy his ministry. He, he had multiple rebellions against him in life. His own children rebelled against him. He just knew what it was like to deal with things that he couldn't change. He couldn't uh, do anything about. And so in David's life, he was constantly uh, reassuring himself, and that's a good thing, about how God was going to work it out. God's going to work this out. And he kept on telling, even though maybe like us, sometimes we don't know how or we don't know when or we don't know if maybe. But we still tell, have you ever just not had a lot of faith and just had to tell God's going to work this out? I, and David was good at that. He reassured, he encouraged himself many times in the Lord because God would always show up. He, he didn't have to, our flesh worries, but God's always working. I mean, always, and, and he always, and if we look at the historical attributes of God, he has always came through for his children. 
Every time, all the time, God is good and his mercy endures forever. And so David was willing to do something a lot of us, including myself, are not sometimes wait, uh, willing to do. Wait patiently on the Lord. Psalm 27, we'll pick up where we left off last week, 7 through 14 this week. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Do not turn your back on me. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. Don't abandon me, O God of my salvation. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me how to live, O Lord. And lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath they threaten me with violence. Yet I am confident. I am confident that I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Let's pray. Father, help us to understand that we can see you here and now. Lord, we do not have to just endure life. We can enjoy life. And we can do it through trusting in you. Help us wait patiently. Help us be confident in you. Not the things of this world, not the systems of this world, not even the people of this world. But in you, who is the one who created all and sustains all by your very words and your power. May your words show us your power today and may we trust in it fully. In Jesus' name, amen. David was confident that he would see the Lord's goodness While he was living, that's different than when you die, amen? Like everybody knows if they are saved, because you have a no-so salvation. If I say, are you saved? I say, are you going to heaven? Well, I sure hope so, preacher. Well, you better get that figured out, because a hope so is not a no-so. A hope so don't get there, a no-so does, okay? I know I'm saved. I know Jesus resides in me through his spirit. I know I've been sealed under the day of redemption. I know uh, that there's, there's a room at the Father's house for me. I know that he's going to take care of me. The scripture says for all eternity. And that, that's later though, right? What, wouldn't you like some of that now? Amen. Yeah. I I mean, I do. I don't like suffering. (laughs) I don't like turmoil. I don't like trouble. I don't like trials and tribulations, even though we know it's going to be a part of life. David said, I am confident that I'm going to see the Lord's goodness now. Now. I want to see it now. I want want to enjoy life, the goodness of God, the joy of the Lord. The waiting here is the hard part. He was willing to wait until that happened. So he's in the bad spot, headed towards the good spot. (laughs) But he was willing to wait in the moment, and and this is an expectancy. This is not a like, I'm just going to sit here and, oh, this is like, oh, God, I know, God, this, I I, I can, I can, I I hope, like, not a, I hope so that it might happen, but a, a, a guaranteed expectancy, a binding together of faith in God's will for you here on the earth, looking patiently towards the only one who can change your situation and circumstance. The only one. Too many times we try to do something about where we are, where we are. Instead of just waiting for God to move, not doing, just being, not moving, just trusting, not manufacturing, just letting God do his work. So what does patiently waiting look like? Number one, waiting patiently is about praying passionately. Waiting patiently is about praying passionately. Verses 7 through 10 Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. 
The old Bible, the King James Version, translates verse number 7 like this. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Hear me, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Cry is not just a, God, please help me. Y'all understand that? Anybody ever cried in here? Cried out to the Lord? Not, not just, God, just I'm, I'm here and you're here and we're all here and it is what it is. God, just help me. But cry is a passion. It's a, it's a, it's a warning from the inside. It's an it's a emotional plea to God that you are so moved by in the moment that it bleeds into your prayer life. That that which you're dealing with is so strongly upon you that in the midst of talking to God, something besides words just comes out of your body. Like tears, brokenness, hurting, pain. That God, I, I, I've got to have some help here, Lord. Have any of you been in that moment before? I don't know what else to do but cry in those moments. That's how I'm built. So if I get in a bad spot, I'm not getting mad. I'm, get, I'm crying, okay? That, that's, that's how God built me. And when it talks about crying with your voice, it means to call aloud, to, to bleat, like a crackling voice. Like thunder is one of the words in the, in the, in the Hebrew here. Thunder's loud. Have you ever heard thunder before? Like passionately proclaiming, God, I've got to have some help. I've always said from the pulpit that if the preacher's not excited, the people won't be excited. But I also believe that if your prayers won't move you, they won't move God. If your prayers won't move you, they won't move God. Because in those moments... Do we really believe this is what, do we really have, is it really that bad? Is this moment, am I, I'm not wasting God's time, but I've got to be serious about that which I am taking to God. This is the repurposing of the energy and passion that would come. Listen, I want to go do something. I want to go fix it. I want to make this happen. Repurpose that fix it energy towards passionately praying to God. Stop doing and start being in his presence. It's okay to want to do something. Don't do it, though. Repurpose that passion in your prayer life. See, the hard thing for us to, I guess, stomach is God doesn't need our help. That's hard. That's hard for me to deal with. <laughs> that God doesn't need my help. God doesn't need. God, I don't have to be the preacher behind this pulpit. I, I don't have to be the pastor here. I don't even have to be, like, God doesn't need me to make the world go round. God, and, and when I understand some of this, it stops me from trying to fix that situation. Because I understand God doesn't need me to fix this. God doesn't need my help. God's in full control of this. And me worrying and spinning and all of this stuff doesn't fix any of it. I'm just going to go to him and say, God, you don't need me, but you love me. And you love me enough to listen to me. And because you've listened to me and this is a desire of my heart and I'm running after you, you're going to move on my behalf. You're going to work on my behalf. He doesn't need me to fix it. I need him to fix it. I need to believe that he can that he will and that he wants to. That he can, he will, and he wants to. I need his help. I need him to move into this place that I'm at like David and say, I can't do this. i got all these people lying to me. I've got all these issues in my life. I've got all this stuff going on. But I'm confident that I'm going to see some good in my life. And I'm confident that it's going to happen before I die. So I'm just going to sit here and wait on the Lord. When God moves you, move towards him and pray passionately. I love verse number 8. My heart said that I heard you say this, God, come and talk with me. But too many times our response is different. David said, I've heard you say come and talk to me. And David's heart responded Lord, I am coming. 
Not I'm going to do this. Not I've got this to do. Not I'm going to fix this. God's saying, come talk, not go do. Come, come sit with me. Come talk with me. Come tell me what's going on. If you want to go try to fix it, go ahead. I'm going to be sitting right here on my throne waiting for you to come talk to me about that which I'm going to do in your future. But you, until you're ready to talk, don't expect me to do. Until you're ready to sit in my presence, don't expect me to do these things you're wanting me to do. My heart responds, Lord, I am coming. It's not just waiting in the presence of God. It's waiting in His, in Him, with Him, listening to Him. Why? Because He's always, verse 9, He's always been my helper. Nobody has ever helped you like He's helped you. That's the conf- That's why David said, I am confident because he knew that God was the only one that could have got him to this place. My heart responds, Lord, I am running back to the one who is the only one who's ever helped me, the only one who's ever saved me, the one who changed my life, the one who has brought me to this place. The promises in this scripture are not about me. They are for me and they are about him. I am running back to the one who said this, all of this says he is good, he is strong, he He is able, he is mighty, he is loving, and he is merciful. I'm running to this God, not the God of my own imagination, not me as God. I dethrone myself, and I run to the throne of the one who sits upon it. God himself is waiting for you to come into his presence. Why? Because even if your father and mother abandon you, the Lord will hold you close. On this earth... You are continually going to be let down by people. And if you have unrealistic expectations that you're not, you're going to live all of your life miserable. Somebody says, well, why doesn't this upset you? Or why is it? Because unrealistic expectations. I don't expect my kids to act right. (laughs) They're not going to. I'm still going to discipline them, but I don't expect it because it's not their nature. So I don't live my life upset all the time that they're not acting right. Because I, I don't expect them. I expect them to get a whipping at some point today. I expect that to happen. Really. I don't expect all of y'all to act right. I'm your pastor, but I, you're not perfect. And, and neither am I. And if you expect me to do everything right, that's unrealistic too. Think about life. Ups and downs. People. People let people down. People let God down. If people will let God down, people will let you down. And even though your mother, even, this is what this is saying. All people will let you down. But even if the ones that brought you into the earth and are supposed to love you more than anybody else on the earth, even if they let you down, God is still going to help you. God is still going to be there for you. God is still going to help you in this moment. Even though they have abandoned me, the Lord will hold me close. Well, the only way for anyone to hold you close is to get close to them. (laughs) You see this? If you're not praying passionately in the presence of God, the Lord... The Lord will hold me close. You've got to get close enough to him for him to wrap his arms around you. Prayer makes the difference in waiting patiently. Number two, waiting patiently is about being taught purposefully. Now think about this. Everything that's happening in your life right now is teaching you something. Everything. Now we don't like that either. Because we don't want to be taught anything, Right? I know it all. I I don't want to, like, but we've got to see, okay, I'm waiting, I'm praying, God, you know where I am. But I've also got to see that which is right in front of me and what God's trying to do in my life. We waste our trials. We waste our trouble. We waste our tribulation. We're praying, God, fix it, praying, God, fix it. But in the moment of that, while God is at work, while we're waiting patiently, we got to be taught purposefully. Like there's something going on here. God, what are you up to? God, what are you doing? God, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to see? What, what am I, what are you doing in my life to make me into who you want me to be? Everything that David was going through was going to help him rule the kingdom of Israel. Everything. 
Everything was purposeful in his life. Waiting patiently is trying to understand what God is trying to teach us in the moment. What, what is this moment about? And when I say trying to understand, that's exactly what I mean. I'm not saying you're going to be like, oh, that's exactly what, and that's exactly, and that, no, 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 no. God works in exacts like perfects. We have to pray, God, reveal to us through your Holy Spirit what you're doing. Sometimes we get it and sometimes we don't. Amen? Sometimes I'm like, that was it. And sometimes I'm like, God, I don't know what this is. And that's Okay. That's, you're not God, and that's okay. God, I don't know what this is, but I'm not going to waste it like a stream that flows between its banks following a certain path. So does our lives. It's pointed. It's purposeful. It's going. Your life is going in the direction God would have it to go. The banks are the will of God, and and you're in the middle, and you are following. This is how it goes. It, it's just like that, really. It's back and forth and up and down. And all these rocks and stra- all these things that are in that same stream, the stream of life. And you're just going and you're going, God, uh, one second it's like calm water. And the next second it's like rapids. But everything has a purpose. And every moment is a teaching moment. Where God, like a teacher in front of the classroom, is pointing to his whiteboard saying, and this is what I need you to do here. This is what I'm trying to teach you. And God is the master of that. Not me. I'm pointing towards God and saying, he's the one trying to teach you. But you, gotta, you can't be so worn out by the circumstance of situation that you don't look for the spiritual implications in it. So many times we get so beat down in the moment. The last thing we think about is, God, what are you trying to do here? God, what do you want to do here? God, what do you want from me? In fact, a lot of times in these moments, we're probably thinking, God, there ain't no way you can use me or work with me or love me. We get down on ourselves, and the devil uses that bad mind that we still deal with all the time to bring us to a place where we're not looking for the spiritual things, but we, we get depressed, and we get anxious, and we go through these cycles of emotions that keep us in a whirlwind of trouble instead of going, God, you're good. There's something going on. God I will just trust in you I will pray to you and I will keep looking towards the one who created all this and has a purpose for me God has a purpose for your life and the pain and the trouble that you are going through this waiting with purpose the purpose of what you're going through is to teach you how to live life verse number 11 teach me how to live why am I going through this because you're going to go through it again And you're going to go through it again. And hopefully by the second or third time, we might react correctly. Amen? (laughs) Or I'm going through it in order to help somebody else live through it. Why do I suffer? Because I'm going to help somebody after me not suffer like I suffered. I'm going to find that. Why am I dealing with this wayward child? Because there's a 20-year-old right now raising a 4-year-old that's going to be wayward at some point. And you, as an older woman, are going to be able to comfort that younger woman and help them through that moment. This, the, you're going through a divorce. Listen, it's not good. You're going to stay with God. You're going to do what you need to do. But somebody else is going to go through one also, and you're going to help them. You're going to be married for 25 years, and it's not going to be easy. There's going to be a couple that's trying to give up on it that's been married about two. And you're going to be able to say, hey, I wanted to give up at one time too. But God saw me through, and he will you too. How to live? How would we know how to live if we didn't have issues in life? (laughs) We would live like everything was chocolate and Pie and ca- like confetti, like Blake, confetti pockets, you know? Y'all were here the night for that? I wish everything was confetti. But we know the first thing that went wrong, the world would collapse. 
We go through these things to teach us how to live righteously, how to live right, how to expect things, how to act in the middle of these things. He is leading us, verse 11 says, along the right path, the righteous path. Our humanity says, this is not a good path I am on. But God says, let me teach you how to walk the roads of life because there are purpose on these paths. Wait on me. Your enemies are waiting. Did you see that? Verse number 11. Lead me along these paths. For my enemies are waiting on me. Your enemies are waiting. Your enemies are waiting on you. Not waiting on the Lord. The moment you don't wait on the Lord. There's a snare and a trap set. Your enemies are then waiting. And you will fall into it. It's. It's predestined to happen. You're going to do it. I'm literally saying there's no way. When you don't wait on the Lord, the enemy's pretty. We don't give him enough. Probably, an, an, a, you know, I don't like talking good about him, but he's good at what he does. And he sets this trap. So he's waiting on you. Your enemy waits on you to make your move. It says in verse number 11 that they are waiting on you. Verse number 12 says, do not let me fall into their hands. The enemy waits. He waits for you to get tired of waiting. I'm just tired of waiting on God. I'm going to make this. Don't do it. The enemy stands outside of your door ready to pounce. And the moment you make a step without God, he's on you. Wait on the Lord. And wait on him. And wait on him. And wait on him. And when you're tired of waiting, wait some more. And when nothing happens, wait on him. Because those who wait upon the Lord, Isaiah says their strength will be renewed. And you will mount up with wings as eagles. If you want to walk into the snare, go ahead. I've warned you. It's going to happen. And when you come to me and say, hey, preacher, this happened. You were right. I'm going to say, I told you so. Or do you want to wait on the Lord and be strengthened and given the ability to soar above that which you are dealing with? To rise up on wings as eagles. To have this kind of, con- this is soaring confidence, verse number 13. Yet I am confident with all this bad and all this trouble and all these issues. I am being threatened. People are lying about me. I've not done anything wrong. And that's when it's the worst. Is when people are talking about you and they are lying on you. If, if I did it and you say I did it, praise God I did it. But it's even worse when I haven't done it and you're still saying I did it. That's terrible. False accusations are worse than the truth of what I actually did. These moments can get you down. Yet you can soar above those moments. Yet I am confident that I will see. I can believe in the blessing of now and later. I can believe in the blessings of here and now. David is saying, God's going to bless me while I I know when life is over, it's going to be good. But I want to see the goodness of God now. So I have to wait. And that's going to take verse 14, bravery and courage. God, give me strength. God, I'm going to wait on you. But I am so much flesh and humanity that I need you to help me wait on you. I need bravery because I don't know what I'm walking into. But, God, I know that you are in control. You make the crooked path straight. God, I understand all of this. I don't know what's going on, but I understand what your word said. I need courage. I need courage to to just do what you're saying. And in this moment, it's just sit here. Bravery and courage. See, sometimes the... Bravest thing you can do and the most courageous is not do anything. We think a lot of times it's go get the rocks out of the creek and kill the big giant. Amen. It's kill the bears and the lions. That's what David did, right? Own hand. Anybody ever killed a bear with your own hands in here? 
And some of you have been lying to your wife. That's how you got her. Your looks didn't help any. But you did kill that bear with your bare hands that time hiking up in the mountains. Or that lion. Or that giant. Bravery. Strong courage. We think that's what that looks like. Actually in the, in the spiritual kingdom. That's okay in a physical kingdom. But in the spiritual kingdom, bravery and courage is, I'm just going to have faith in God and wait on Him. This is yours. It takes more to wait on God than it does to go do something for Him. (laughs) And if you just wait on Him, in the end, you'll probably do more for Him than you ever would have done in your flesh. Trust God in this moment. Pray passionately and be taught with purpose. Every head bowed and every eye closed. This is your moment to wait. Something you've been trying to fix. Something you've been trying to handle. You've been God and he's just been waiting. It's time to trade spots and trade seats. It's time for him to be God and you to wait. People already coming to the altar because we know when God speaks to us. So in this moment, if you just want to wait on the Lord, come lay it at his feet. That's a good first step. Here it is, God. Here it is. Here's what I'm dealing with, God. First, you've got to resign from the throne of your heart. You've got to lay it down and leave it with him. You don't have to go back and check on it and see if it's being taken care of. Give it to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for these ones that just want to wait on you. They've seen that the thing that they are dealing with, Lord, is too much for them to handle in their flesh. And what a great realization that is. God, there's nothing greater than just letting you have it. What freedom comes from trusting you. Thank you for the stressless life. The one you've called us to live in you. Do not worry or be anxious for anything. But pray about everything. And God will give you that peace that passes all understanding. It's what we need, church. You come if you want to pray. Or pray where you're at. But let's just wait on the Lord this morning. Give it to Jesus this morning. If you're not saved, he wants your heart. Would you call upon the name of Jesus to be saved from your sin today? If you're not a Christian, Christ will save you today through his shed blood. Would you pray and ask him to? By faith you believe. By prayer you receive. Today God can change your life. And reconcile you to himself. Make you right with himself. Through Jesus Christ. His death, burial and resurrection. 
call upon the name of the Lord Jesus today. patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Father, help us to wait in all things. In all things, help us to wait. Help us to hear your voice before we move. Help us to trust you in those moments when we hear your voice, to have faith to take that step. But let us be led by you and no one else. Let us trust in you in all things, for all things. We thank you for loving us. Yes, we are confident. And yes, we will wait and trust you that we will see your goodness in the land of the living. Thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Aren't you thankful for his goodness, church? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Matt. Patience, that's one's always hard for me, waiting on the Lord. I like to go do things. That's what everybody always says. You asked me to do something, then you went and did it. Just trying to, can't be, it's hard for me to be patient. But All right, uh, don't forget about Sunday school. Uh, we got Sunday school here in just a few minutes. I look at my wrist like I know what time it is, but I don't. I don't even wear a watch. I never wear a watch. I don't have anything on my fingers. I am married. I'm not available. I just don't wear anything on my hands or my fingers. So, just thought I'd go ahead and throw that out there in case y'all were wondering. I don't know what time it is, but we have Sunday school here in just a few minutes. So, if you would like to join us for Sunday school, we'd love to have you. We can get you plugged in, and you can see me or Miss Janie Hunt. We'll get you plugged into the right class, and uh, we would love to have you join us. Don't forget about uh, the offering boxes on the back wall, building fund, uh, different things you can uh, designate on your pocket, your envelope that's in the seat pocket in front of you and uh, put it in the box and we'll get it collected and put where it's supposed to be. Let's all stand. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. God, we thank you for the many blessings that you've given us. And God, we do uh, we do ask for patience, God. And I pray, God, that we would, we would wait on you as Brother Matt's talked about this morning. I pray that we would be the kind of people that didn't do anything until you told us to. And God, when you tell us to move, we would move with all of our might and with every, all of our strength. And we would do exactly what you have called us to do with every bit of our energy, God. Because we know that we've waited on you and we know that you've called us to do something. And I pray, God, that when you do, we would work hard for your kingdom so that others may know who you are by the way we act, and by the things we say, and by the things we do. God, we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. See you on Sunday school.